A new political show is moving to five days a week yes. right here on Fox 11. That's right. Battleground focuses on the power of the seven swing states and their collective 93 electoral votes in the presidential election. Essie Cup is the host, and she joins us live from Philadelphia to discuss Battleground's approach to the election. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Really glad to talk to you. Look, so uh, let's talk about the importance of focusing on the swing states because, you know, you got to ask, is it overstated any? Uh, well, it hasn't been. I mean, it, it just in the last cycle, some of these states um, went by just a few thousand votes uh, of a difference. And we could see those kinds of margins again. Um, you remember Georgia last year was just 11,000 plus votes made the difference. Um, if possible, this, this race, race might be even closer. So I don't think you can overstate how important these seven swing states are. And we're watching them really closely with all of our affiliates on the ground, our, our big network and team of reporters to tell us exactly what's happening in all corners of these seven states. I, I find it funny how these like elections have shifted. Remember back when it was like Florida, 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 mm -hmm. and Ohio. Yes. Ohio. And then now right. we're going to these <laughs> Rust Belt states. And these campaigns know it. So I think this show, uh, SC, is pretty brilliant because you see these campaigns, they pick these two vice presidential candidates, almost like a yes. vice presidential candidate, like a battle of like who is, uh, you know, who is more rust belt you know yes who's rustier um, you're, <laughs> who's you're rustier? so right and 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 they were both chosen for the same exact reason to appeal to the midwest rural agricultural and rust belt voter that you know democrats have been losing over the past few decades so it'll be interesting to see who prevails there or if these vi vp picks really have much of an impact at all. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's interesting. Not only were they chosen for that very reason, but that's almost like both of their major talking point about the other one is that he, he's fake. Right. He's not really who's rustier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's a battle of who's rustier. And, mm -hmm. and you know, authenticity is a big, big factor in every election. So we're hearing on the ground from voters what they think of Tim Walls and J.D. Vance. Most uh. voters are still just getting to know Tim Walls. Um, and, and, and J.D. Vance is having, he's having a tricky time, even in those Rust Belt states where he's meant to appeal. His favorability numbers are not great. Um, you use that word authenticity and just yeah. wondering how long can uh, Vice President Kamala Harris go on without actually doing some media? Can she just you yeah. know, run out the clock all the way to election time and uh, just have these, you know, these kind of cookie cut uh, rallies? Yes. There's two answers to this question. She can go as long as she wants is the first answer because mm -hmm. it's working. She's doing, she, you know, all of her numbers are going in the right direction for her. She's making up for some voters that, that Joe Biden lost. But the other answer is that, of course, we hope she starts answering questions soon and, and giving interviews. That should matter to voters because, you know, the press will ask questions that surrogates and fans won't um, and and she needs to be pressed on both her record and her agenda um, they all do and that goes you know for for all the campaigns so I think the pressure especially from the press will start to get a little uncomfortable and and I think she will sit down for interviews you know on that note I think that's so interesting because I've been kind of just kind of checking in and looking and it seems the press is more upset about this than voters yeah. and I wonder if yes. voters are just so used to the information being given to them mm -hmm. by journalists that they don't even know what they're missing right now I think that's such a good point we in the press are very upset about this and I've heard <laughs> many times that this is just the press's fragile ego that we didn't <laughs> have gotten to talk to her yet but Again, I'll make the pitch. The press can ask questions about accountability yeah. and, and, and a record and an agenda that fans can't. And so while she can do these interviews in new ways, on TikTok, for example, or with new audiences, she still needs to do them. She still mm -hmm. needs to be asked the questions. And ultimately, that benefits voters even if they don't really know it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Essie, on your way through the studios there at Fox 29, if you see Mike Jarek, will you tell him we said hello? Please do. I have seen Mike. <laughs> he is great. And I will say hi <laughs> from you guys. He's the best. He's awesome. All right. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you for your time this mm -hmm. morning. Uh, we yeah. are really uh, excited for this show. I know it's been uh, uh, a part of the Fox family here, and uh, it's going to be uh, an amazing next several months. 80, a couple 80, of months. 80 days. Yes. Yep. Wow. I right. say several, and it's just right around the corner. Uh -huh. Thank you, SC. Yeah.
Nice to talk Thanks, to you. Thanks, guys. Very nice to you talk too. to you. All right, Battleground, The Swing States airs Monday through Friday here on Fox 11 at 11.30 p.m. right after Good Night L.A. Yeah, hard to believe it's just about 80 days away.